Welcome to the Lost Media Chronicles, a show which talks about various lost movies, music, art, and in this episode's case, a piece of found media with some pieces of lost media connected to it. While found media may not carry the air of mystery of lost media, it can still have some very interesting aspects to it. From the miraculous finding of The Passion of Joan of Arc, to Die Kate being sent the Crack Master short, there is a lot that can be said about these elusive works. And today's theme is especially interesting because it's one of the worst Christmas specials ever made. What, you want me to get all nostalgia critic-like and just go, Yeah, Christmas! Well, guess what? That's not gonna happen. My holly jolly ass is gonna sit here with a ball of unlit Christmas lights I was too lazy to untangle. Now let's talk about Rap City Kids. Out of all the media the wiki has uncovered over the years, Rap City Kids is certainly the strangest, if not the most cringeworthy. The full title is actually Rap City Kids Believe in Santa, but nobody cares enough to actually call it that all the time. It aired in 2002, sometime in between November and December, on affiliates of the WB, now known as the CW. It's said that it might have aired on some of the other channels owned by the WB, such as Cartoon Network, but this has never been confirmed. It was known for having god-awful animation, unfunny jokes, an absolutely terrible script, and somehow getting a hold of some of the biggest voice actors out there. No, seriously, this thing had friggin' Nancy Cartwright of Bart Simpson fame, and Mark Hamill, known for his voice talent of the Joker, and of course playing Luke Skywalker in Star Wars. The special never aired again, and the only evidence of its existence was the IMDb page, a few flabbergasted reviews, and quite a few online posts mocking it. A demo reel was also uncovered, but it didn't show us much. No VCR or DVD recorded copies surfaced. It became one of the most sought pieces of media this side of a day with SpongeBob SquarePants, except in this case, what was being sought after actually existed. Dykate got into contact with the director of the film, Colin Slater, who claimed to own a digital beta tape copy. Slater spent $125 to transfer it to his computer, and wanted Dykey to spend double that money due to another copy Slater had made. Several weeks went by, and Dykey didn't receive the movie. He thought he had been scammed by Slater. After one long, bickering conversation with Slater, Dykey thought he had lost the battle. Until one day when he mysteriously found a copy of the movie sitting in his inbox. Dykey decided to release it as the last part of Found Media Week, a week where he revealed one piece of new media every day for a full week. It was by far the most interesting find he had that entire week. Now, I took the time to watch this god unholy abomination, and let me tell you, it's bad. It's really bad. Its story is nonsensical and cliche at the same time. It's almost as if there were two different main writers arguing over what direction it was going to go, and then they just both threw their hands up in the air and said, fuck it. Our main character is this rapping street kid named Ricky. Oh, and I'm just gawking, because all the toy stores are looking mighty packed. Electronic toys, video games, balls and bats. I saw a scooter with a motor that was flat. I hope the room in Santa Slay just for that. I've been told this time of year is forgiven. Give to please others, Santa, this is how I'm living. But if you Whoa, oh, oh, oh. Biggie Smalls? No, 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 no. Tupac? No, oh, no, no. Kanye? Oh, definitely not. We all know who the real OG is, and that's freaking Ricky. Ricky gives a very special teddy bear of his to a girl named Nicole. Nicole, being the super likable character she is, throws the bear into a dumpster. What a wonderful start for our romantic lead, ladies and gentlemen, throwing people's treasured items into the trash. Then Ricky gets shoved to the side so that way we can spend even more time with the uber bitch. Nicole discovers Ricky's litter to Santa and, for some reason, feels inspired to get Ricky's bear out of the dumpster. After awful chase sequences involving nightmarish looking dogs, Nicole retrieves the teddy bear, returns it to Ricky, and the two make amends. 
Christmas Day comes and Nicole receives one of Ricky's desired gifts. A video box or whatever and gives it to him. Then everybody gets together, Grandma speaks a bunch of gibberish, the movie ends and the audience tries not to ponder suicide. The animation is an eyesore. It's hard not to feel shock while watching this, wondering how on God's green earth this thing made it onto national television. Those awkward CGI cartoons funded by churches don't look this bad. None of it flows or even looks believable. Whenever the characters talk or laugh, they look more like they're suffering from seizures. Also, there's obviously a lot of editing that needed to be done here. There's shots of walking and basic movements that either take way too long or are completely unnecessary. Watch this scene, for instance. Hope you get lots of stuff. It lasts only a couple of seconds, but it feels like a damn eternity, and it completely takes you out of the experience. Now, there are a couple of positive things that can be said about Rhapsody Street Kids. Some of the voice performances are actually not all that bad. At least the appearances from actors like Hamill, though phoned in, help balance out the terrible performances like that of Ricky's voice actor in that creepy-ass grandma. The background music is actually pretty cool as well. In places, there are demented versions of beloved Christmas songs. It also has a good intention, even if the humor doesn't always work and a lot of the characters are walking stereotypes. For the most part, though, it's more bizarre than it is bad, and one has to wonder exactly how this thing got on TV. The answer is the stuff of legends. A lot of people that worked on the special, namely Cartwright and apparently Slater, who had a huge crush on her, were supporters of Scientology. Seeing as how Scientology likes to constantly jerk its own dick, someone at some level had enough connections to get this thing shown on television. Seeing as it was absolutely awful, showing it more than once was out of the question. It's not a complete explanation, but at least it points us in the right direction. Now, even though the special has been unearthed by the Lost Media Wiki, there's still a few pieces of Lost Media that people have been questioning. First is the obvious. At the end of the special is a teaser trailer for the planned sequel, A Bunny's Tale, which thankfully never aired. It's not known how far this thing got into production, as the teaser was nothing more than just a brief audio clip of some little girl claiming to be Jenna, saying that she'll be back with the Easter Bunny! My name's Jenna, and I'll be back with the Easter Bunny! Other lost media includes the other alleged films that Slater claimed to work on, with only Dinosaur Island ever being found. The website for Wolf Tracer Studios Incorporated boasted well over 200 films being made by them, but IMDB only confirms the existence of the two films. Maybe they were talking about the combined experience from all the staff. Could more of these terrible animated nightmares still survive out there in the realms of our deepest fears? Who knows? Finally, there's the alleged cancelled score slash soundtrack that was supposed to be written by Whitney Houston. Until recently, there wasn't any evidence that this ever existed. In 2015, the daughter of one of the producers of the film made a lengthy Facebook post detailing her dad's disappointment in Rhapsody Street Kids. In it, she stated how he never really oversaw anything, and how quality control in the production was basically non-existent. While she didn't really go into detail about things like how the hell Mark Hamill got involved, she did leak one previously unknown detail, that Whitney Houston had apparently written a score for the film. No input from the Houston estate has ever been made. Many Houston fans think it's for the best that her score remains unreleased, Given the tragic nature of her death and her turbulent lifestyle, especially around 2002, while some bootlegs float around of rare songs from Houston, nothing has ever been confirmed to have been from this movie, assuming the soundtrack got that far into production. 
Rap City Street Kids remains a hot-button topic, even though it's already been found. The combination of its terrible quality, as well as the mystery behind its production, keep this as a fascinating topic amongst lost media enthusiasts. The more details that come up about it, the more questions we have. I'm always told that that's why these animated abominations are so sought after. Everything points to how terrible it is, and they're often surrounded by sketchy or horrifying stories behind their production. It's as if a day with SpongeBob SquarePants was actually made and leaked online. The revelations end up making people all the more curious of how it came to be. I often hear people telling me that that's why music can never be as interesting, because there's no way for it to raise any type of stipulation like that, right? Well, you know what? Challenge accepted. Next episode, we get to go over a musician who has a very, very sketchy past, absolutely terrible music, and enough morbid curiosity to keep your eyes glued to the screen. You've been warned. See you guys next time in 2017. Seriously, watch my vinyl show. Merry Christmas, everybody! As you can see, I had two videos available for you guys as a special Christmas present. But I actually have one more surprise ready for you guys, so be sure to keep an eye on my channel so that way you can see what it is. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment on this video if you want to see more just like it. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. I want to taste you, desecrate you. You should get naked, you would look good naked, oh, I want to put my steamy goo deep, deep inside of you, your body's a prison and I can't break free. So, uh, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but, uh, um, so, earlier I had to, like, sign, um, a package that arrived in the mail, and it was, it was my new record player, and, uh, a couple of hours earlier, I guess I forgot there was an apple I was going to eat, and I placed the pen down. <sighs> well, because the internet is going to insist I do this, I have a pen... I have a pen. I have an apple. Uh, apple pen. I seriously don't know how I can even live with myself now. <sighs>